Let's take a look at how we can um, uh, use the HP Prime graphing calculator to help us solve polynomial inequalities. Now, first off, polynomial inequalities. Our first step, and there's different ways you can do this on uh, various calculators, so I'm just showing you a way that combines the calculator with uh, algebra. So you got technology, you're not like doing everything. Now, our first step is to get everything on the left side, zero on the right side. Step two, factor the left side, set each factor equal to zero, and solve. Now these are our critical values. Some books call them critical numbers. Note, you may have to use the quadratic formula to solve, um, I just may have to use the quadratic formula. So not every problem will factor, most of them will. Step three, using the x-axis, the critical values, and the graph, then determine the answer. If we have a, um, let's see, less than or less than or equal to, then your answer is below the x-axis. If you have a greater than or greater than or equal to, your answer is above the x-axis. If you have a less than or greater than, then you're going to use parentheses. If you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you use brackets. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this with our first problem. This one here. And I guess how to start a new. There we go. Okay, so we got uh, x squared plus 4x minus 5 is less than 0. Our first step is get everything on the left side, zero on the right side. And that's done. Step two is to factor our left side. This factor is using the uh, PSD method. If you took algebra with me. So this factor is as x plus 5 times x minus 1, less than 0. Then it says set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So we'll set the x plus 5 equal to 0. And we'll set the x minus 1 equal to 0. So we got x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to positive 1. And those are our critical values. Now well, step 3. It says using the um, x-axis. So here's our x-axis. Um, the critical values. We came up with two critical values. So we're going to have a negative 5. And we'll have a positive 1. Now the critical values split them into intervals. So here's an interval. And here's an interval. Clear over here is negative infinity. Clear over here is positive infinity. This first interval is from negative infinity to negative 5. This second one is from negative 5 to 1. And this last interval is from 1 to positive infinity. Then it says using x-axis critical values, we just did that, and graph. So let's graph it. Now what we're going to graph is once you got um, zero on one side, then you can just plug this in your calculator. So let's see what that gives us. Okay, if you're not in your apps um, menu, to press your apps. Then we want to go into function. So highlight it and then press enter. Do a backspace to wipe out whatever's there. And then I'm going to do my x key, x squared, plus 4x minus 5 and enter, and then I'll press my plot to graph it. 
Now what you're going to find is that your graph will cross the x-axis at the critical values you found. You see it's crossing at negative 5 and 1. So I'm going to sketch this on my, my paper here. So our graph looks like um, that right there. Now we don't care to make it precise. It's actually in some cases a lot easier if you make it imprecise. Okay, so using the x-axis critical values and graph then determine the answer. Our original problem was a less than, and this tells us that the less than, the answer is below the x-axis. So we're looking where our graph is below the x-axis. Well, in this interval it's above, in this interval it's above. But from negative 5 to 1, my graph is below the x-axis. So that interval there is my answer. So answer is going to be negative 5 to 1. And uh, this is a less than, and less than says we're going to use parentheses on them. So we'll put parentheses around them. And that's our answer. Let's take a look at another example. We get x to the third plus 7x squared minus 4x minus 28 is less than 0. Okay, first step. Get everything on the left side, 0 on the right side. Now that's done. Get everything on the left side, 0 on the right side. Step 2, factor left side. Well, this would be grouping. We've got four more terms. So I'm going to group the first two terms together, or group the last two terms together. The first two terms have a x squared in common, so I'll factor it out, and that gives us x plus 7. And our last group has a negative 4 in common, so I'll factor that out, and that gives us x plus 7. Now they both have an x plus 7, so I'll factor that out, and that leaves us x squared minus 4. Now we can still factor it down further. x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares, two terms of the minus stream. So it factors. we got x plus 7, and then it factors as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Okay. Then it says set each factor equal to 0. So I'll set x plus 7 equal to 0. I'll set x plus 2 equal to 0, and x minus 2 equal to 0. Now this gives us negative 7, this one gives us negative 2, and this one gives us a positive 2. So I'm going to put negative 7 here, I put negative 2 here, and I put a positive 2 here. Again, these split them into intervals, like this. Clear over here is negative infinity, clear over here is positive infinity. This first interval is from negative infinity to negative 7. The second interval is negative 7 to negative 2. Third one is negative 2 to 2. And this last one is 2 to positive infinity. Now we want to graph this. So we're going to come up here and we're going to graph uh, where we have y on the right side. So we could put that in. So let's see what that gives us. Um, let me see. I'm going to go my... Uh, symbol button here, symbolic view. Go backspace. I get x to the third, so I'll do x, then the x to the y button, three. Right arrow to get out of exponent mode, plus seven x and then x squared, minus four x, minus twenty eight. And press enter. Now, if I press plot, you see it crosses at negative seven. Crosses at negative 2 and crosses at positive 2. Now, if I were to sketch my graph, and you have to kind of visualize this, it's coming up, it's slowly going in, keeps slowly going in, reaches a high point, some up here, turns around, comes back, passes through that, reaches a low point, turns around, passes through that. So if I were to sketch that, it would look something like this right here. Now you're looking at that and it's like, well, that doesn't look anything like my graph. Well, it's skewed it would be. And we would rather work with it in this form than what you see in here. You just have to kind of generally look for above and below. Because that's how we're going to determine our answer. For this problem, we had a less than. And less than says our answer is below the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to look where our graph is below the x-axis. Looks like it's below here. And it also looks like it's below here. Well, this interval is negative infinity to negative 7, and this interval is negative 2 to positive 2. 
Now it's a less than, so everything has parentheses on it. And if you have two intervals, you put a union symbol in between them. And that's our answer. The idea behind uh, using technology is it uh, simplifies some of the um, basic math that make the problem a little bit simpler. So you can focus on the uh, maybe real world applications or, or more of the um, conceptual side than sitting there um, blindly plugging in test cases. Um, that's why I like to show this method because it encompasses uh, the benefits of the graphing calculator with uh, with algebra. I don't even know if this one, uh, because I'm not an expert in HP Prime, but a lot of them you can uh, go back to your symbolic view here, and you can uh, you can put in a, like a lesson zero here. Let me do an edit just for fun. Assuming I can remember where the um, the test uh, options are. Which will be kind of questionable, probably. I definitely um, um let me go into the catalog. I know I can find it there. And scroll. Probably take a while to get up there. Well, let me see if I can quickly go to it. Let's see, alpha A. Okay, there we go. If you do it twice, I'm not sure why they have you do it twice, um, but you can go quickly up there. So I did alpha A, alpha A, and A is above in your bars button. Okay, here's a less than. So we choose that in less than zero, and press enter. And now if I press plot. Yeah, that's what the Texas Systemus uh, calculator does. Um, see how it just put this part where the answer is. And that seems like, well, that's pretty nice. Um, you know, you can visually see what the answer is. Except, one, one example I did on Texas Systemus, they were so close together, I couldn't hardly see the gap in between them. Um, so it is a little bit flawed in that way. I like my method the best. Now, this one has something additional on it, under apps, under advanced graphing. You might be able to go here and do the same thing also. Anyway, that's polynomial, solving polynomial inequalities using HP Prime Graphing Calculator.